In this video, we'll be going over another example of graphing a rational function. In this example, we'll be graphing the function g of x equals x cubed plus x squared divided by 2x squared minus 2x minus 4. We'll be following the same steps that we did in our last video. Our first step is to factor the numerator and denominator and cancel out any common factors. So our function g of x, if we look at the numerator, we'll see that there's a common factor of x squared between the two terms. So let's factor that out. Now let's see what remains. If I have an x cubed and I divide by x squared, there's just an x remaining. And if I have x squared and I divide by x squared, there's just one remaining. So our numerator factors as x squared times x plus one. In our denominator, you might notice that every term here has a factor of two. So we can start by factoring out two from all of our terms. So if we take each term and divide by two, we'd be left with x squared minus x minus two. And we can factor this quadratic a little bit further. So let's rewrite our function. In the numerator, that's x squared times x plus one. In the denominator, we've pulled out a factor of two. Then if I wanna factor this quadratic here, we need two numbers that multiply to negative two and add up to negative one. Those two numbers would be negative two and positive one. So my quadratic here factors as x minus two times x plus one. And here you'll notice that we have a common factor of x plus one in both the numerator and denominator. So let's cancel those out. So our function essentially behaves like x squared divided by two times x minus two. Let's now move on to our second step. We want to find and plot our x and y intercepts. Let's start with the x intercepts. Remember to find the x intercepts, what we wanna do is set the numerator equal to zero and solve for x. Our numerator in this case is just the x squared once we factored and canceled out the x plus one. So we just set x squared equal to zero. And if I wanna solve for x, we can take the square root of both sides. We see that our solution is x equals zero. So that's our x-intercept. And since our x-intercept is x equals zero, that means the origin is our x-intercept. And that also happens to be our y-intercept as well. We can always double check this. If we wanna find our y-intercept, remember what we need to do is evaluate our function at zero meaning we want to evaluate g of zero. In this case, g of zero is going to be zero squared divided by two times zero minus two. In the numerator, that's going to be zero. In the denominator, we end up with negative four. And zero divided by negative four is zero. So again, this confirms for us that the origin is both our x and y intercepts. So on our xy plane, let's plot our x and y intercept at the origin, zero, zero. Our next step is to find the holes and vertical asymptotes for our function. Remember, to find the vertical asymptote, you wanna factor and cancel out common factors in your rational function and then set the denominator equal to zero. We've already factored and canceled in step one, so now all we have to do is set the denominator equal to zero. Set two times x minus two equal to zero. To solve for x, we can start by dividing by two, this leaves us with x minus two is equal to zero, and then add two to both sides, we get x is equal to two. So this is our vertical asymptote. Now for this function, there was a factor of x plus one that was canceled, which means that we're going to have a hole. This is because there's an x value that makes the denominator equal to zero, but is not a vertical asymptote. Specifically, x equals negative one will make this factor equal zero, which means negative one is not part of our domain, but it's not a vertical asymptote. So our hole is going to be at x equals negative one. Again, when we plug negative one into this factor, it makes the whole denominator equal to zero. So x equals negative one is not part of our domain, but it is not a vertical asymptote. So that's why we have a hole there. There's just one last thing to do for this step, and is to plot our vertical asymptote as a dotted line. So go to x equals two and draw a vertical dotted line. Our next step is to find our horizontal or oblique asymptote. Remember that whether we have a horizontal or oblique asymptote will depend on the degrees of the numerator and denominator. The degree of the numerator 
is 3, the degree of the denominator is 2. Since the numerator has one higher degree than the denominator, we'll have an oblique asymptote for our rational function. And if we want to find the asymptote, we need to perform polynomial long division. Now, when we do polynomial long division, we can either use the original function or the one with the canceled factor. Either one will give us the same answer. Let's use the one with the canceled factor. Our dividend is x squared, but normally when we have a quadratic, what comes next is an x term and then a constant term. But in this case, we're missing those terms. So as placeholders, we'll put down a plus 0x and then plus 0 for the constant at the end. Then we'll have our long division symbol. And our divisor is 2 times x minus 2. Let's distribute that 2, making this 2x minus 4. So again, our divisor is 2x minus 4. And now let's perform our polynomial long division. Let's look at those leading terms. First, to figure out what goes on top here, we want to take the leading term of the dividend and divide it by the leading term of the divisor. So x squared divided by 2x gives us 1 half x. I'm going to take the 1 half x, we're going to multiply it to the divisor, and we're going to write the result underneath. 1 half x times 2x gives me that x squared, and then 1 half x times negative 4 gives me negative 2x. Next, we subtract. When we subtract, the x squares will cancel out, and then we have 0x minus negative 2x. The double negatives here turns this into a plus 2x, so 0x plus 2x gives us positive 2x. And then we bring down the next term. We bring down that plus 0. Now we repeat the process. The leading term is now 2x. So we want to take 2x, we want to divide it by the leading term of the divisor. So 2x divided by 2x just leaves me with positive 1. So write down a plus 1 at the top here. And then we take this 1, we multiply it to the divisor, and we write the result underneath. So 1 times 2x gives me 2x. 1 times negative 4 gives me negative 4. And then we subtract. When we subtract, the 2x's cancel out. And then over here, 0 minus negative 4 gives me positive 4. So from our long division, we find that the quotient is 1 half x plus 1, and the remainder is 4. Now remember, when the degree of the numerator is 1 higher than the degree of the denominator, we have oblique asymptotes. And in that situation, our oblique asymptote is y equals the quotient that we get from long division. So in this case, it's y equals 1 half x plus 1. That's our oblique asymptote. So now, let's plot this as a dotted line. This is a line with y-intercept 1 and slope 1 half. We can start by plotting the y-intercept, 0, 1. And now we can get another point that's on this line by using the slope. Remember, the slope tells us the rise and the run. The numerator, 1, is the rise. The denominator, 2, is the run. So if we start at 0, 1, to get to another point, we have to go up one unit and then to the right two units. We would end up at the point 2, 2. Now that we have two points, we can connect it with a dotted line, and this gives us our oblique asymptote. Next, we need to determine where our graph crosses the horizontal or oblique asymptote. In this case, we want to figure out where our graph crosses the oblique asymptote. Remember, if we want to find the intersection, we need to set our function equal to the asymptote and solve for x. For our function g of x, we can either use the original function or the one with the canceled factor. Let's use the one with the canceled factor. So g of x, I'll write in x squared divided by, just like before, let's distribute this to rewrite the denominator as 2x minus 4. So x squared divided by 2x minus 4, that's g of x. And on the right-hand side, let's write in our asymptote. The oblique asymptote that we found was y equals 1 half x plus 1. So on the right-hand side here, we'll write down 1 half x plus 1. To solve this equation, 
I'll first want to get rid of that fraction on the left-hand side. I can do this by multiplying both sides by the denominator. So multiply on the left-hand side, 2x minus 4, and multiply on the right-hand side, 2x minus 4. On the left-hand side, the 2x minus 4 here will cancel out with the 2x minus 4 in the denominator, leaving us with just x squared on the left-hand side. And then on the right-hand side, we have 1 half x plus 1 times 2x minus 4. To multiply this out, we would need to use the FOIL method. So first, let's multiply the first terms. 1 half x times 2x gives me x squared. The outer terms, 1 half x times negative 4 gives me a minus 2x. And then the inner terms, 1 times 2x gives me a plus 2x. And then the last terms, 1 times negative 4 gives me negative 4. We notice here that the minus 2x and the plus 2x, when we combine them together, will cancel out. So we end up with x squared equals x squared minus 4. Now we can subtract x squared from both sides, and that would cancel these x squares out. This leaves me with 0 equals negative 4. And we know that this is not a true statement. 0 is not equal to negative 4. This tells me that this equation has no solutions. And if the equation has no solutions, that means our graph does not cross our oblique asymptote. The next thing that we want to do is make a sign chart for our function. So draw our number line. And on our number line, what we'll want to do is place our x-intercepts and vertical asymptotes. We have an x-intercept at 0, and we have a vertical asymptote at 2. So this divides up our x values into three intervals. We'll pick an x value in each of these three intervals, plug them into our function, and see what the sign of our output is. So, for example, in this first interval, we have all x values less than 0. Let's plug in an x value like x equals negative 2. To see the sign of g of negative 2, we can plug in x equals negative 2 either to our original function or the version that's factored and canceled. Let's plug it into the factored and canceled version. So g of negative 2 would be negative 2 squared divided by 2 times negative 2 minus 2. Now remember, to determine the sign of the output, we don't actually have to evaluate this function. We can look at the sign of each of the factors. In the numerator, negative 2 squared is going to be positive. In the denominator, 2 is positive, And then negative 2 minus 2 is going to be negative. So our numerator is positive. In the denominator, a positive number times a negative number gives me a negative denominator. So a positive number divided by a negative number gives me something that is negative. So on our number line, on the interval from negative infinity to 0, we're going to draw a minus sign. Now let's look at our second interval. We want to look at x values from 0 to 2. Here, we can pick a number like positive 1. So let's look at g of positive 1. That's going to be 1 squared divided by 2 times 1 minus 2. Again, let's look at the sign of each of our factors. In the numerator, 1 squared is positive, 2 is positive, and 1 minus 2 is negative. We have the same signs, so our output again is going to be negative. So on our sign chart, draw a minus sign above the interval 0 to 2. Now for our last interval, we're looking at x values greater than 2. So here we can pick something like 3. So let's do g of 3. That's going to be 3 squared in the numerator, and then 2 times 3 minus 2 in the denominator. 3 squared is positive, the 2 is positive, and 3 minus 2 is also positive. Since every factor here is positive, when I do the multiplication and division, we're going to end up with a positive quantity. And since g of 3 is positive, we're going to draw a plus sign on that last interval. So now we're done with our sign chart. Now remember, this is optional, but what I like to do is I like to go to my graph, and on the x-axis, I want to mark down the places where my graph is positive and negative. That way, when we graph the function, we'll know whether to draw something that's below the x-axis or above the x-axis. So on the interval between negative infinity to 0, my function is negative, so I'm going to highlight this in red. 
between 0 and 2, my function is negative, so highlight this region in red. And then for the x values greater than 2, our function is positive, so we'll highlight this in green. Now we're ready for our last step, which is to use all of our information to help us draw a sketch of the function. To draw our graph, we want to decide what happens at the asymptotes and connect the points that we have on our graph already. Let's start with the leftmost feature. On the left here, we have an oblique asymptote. And there's two things our graph can do at an oblique asymptote. It can either go towards the oblique asymptote from below, or it can go towards it from above. Now keep in mind that as we keep moving to the right, our next feature is our x and y intercept at the origin. So whatever segment we draw, it has to connect with that point. So it will look either something like this or something like this. To help us decide which of these my function will follow, we need to remember what we did in step five. In step five, we found out that our graph does not cross the oblique asymptote. So we don't have any intersections here, which means my graph has to go towards the oblique asymptote from below. So from our x-intercept, let's draw something that goes towards the oblique asymptote from below. If we keep going to the right, we see our next feature here is the vertical asymptote, specifically the left-hand side of the vertical asymptote. Now there's two things my graph can do. It either goes up to positive infinity or it goes down to negative infinity. To help us decide what behavior my graph will follow, we need to look at the sign chart. Specifically, we know that for the x values from 0 to 2, my function is negative here, which means whatever I draw, it has to be below the x-axis. So for that reason, it has to go down to negative infinity. So let's draw something that goes down to negative infinity. If we keep moving to the right, we're on the other side of our vertical asymptote. Again, we need to decide what the behavior is. The options are the graph goes up to positive infinity or it goes down to negative infinity. Looking at our sign chart, for the x values greater than 2, the sign of my function is positive. So whatever I draw, it has to be above the x-axis. So that's why we have to go up towards positive infinity. So let's draw a segment here that goes up to positive infinity. Our last feature is our oblique asymptote, and it has to connect with the segments we've drawn already. Now, one option is drawing something that goes towards the oblique asymptote from above. The other is to draw something that goes towards the oblique asymptote from below. Just like before, we can decide what the behavior is by looking at what happened in step five. In step five, we found that the graph does not cross the oblique asymptote anywhere. So for that reason, there's no crossing over here, which means my graph has to go towards that oblique asymptote from above. So let's complete our graph by drawing something that goes towards the oblique asymptote from above. Now, there's one last thing we need to do before we finish. Remember that this rational function had a hole. Specifically, we found that there's a hole at x equals negative 1 because there's no vertical asymptote there, but x equals negative 1 would make the denominator equal to 0, which means it's not part of our domain. So on our graph, this point here at x equals negative 1, we don't actually want. So we'll replace this with an open circle. So we've now used all of the information that we've obtained to help us draw the graph of this rational function. That's it for this video. In our next video, we'll do one last example of graphing rational functions.